Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Mo Show Live. It's Morris Lilienthal. All right, if you follow me on social or if you know me and you've been around me for any length of time, there's one thing that I'm really passionate about, and that's our local schools and our local teachers and making sure that they're taken care of. And I'm super excited to talk to today's guest about free to teach and their involvement in our local schools and how they are giving back and providing resources for teachers that, that need things for their classroom and providing resources for our local students who may otherwise go without or have to rely upon the teachers to kind of dig in their pocketbooks to, to give them those resources. So I'm excited to talk to our guest today, Allison Kling. Allison is the executive director of Free to Teach here in Madison County, Alabama. She holds a Bachelor of Arts from Trinity Western University, a master's in education from Hunter College. Um, and she's got her master's in divinity from Princeton Theological Seminary. And, and she also has practical experience. She was an elementary school teacher mm -hmm. in New York City uh, for a few years with Teach for America. So Allison, thank you for what you're doing and thank you for your time today. I know this is a busy time of the year for you guys. Thank you for having me. I'm so impressed with your show. I'm so impressed with this platform and I'm really excited to be highlighted and to highlight the work of Free to Teach today. Well, thank you so much. Folks, if you are watching uh, live right now, uh, if you will share this out to help get some more eyeballs on it to highlight this great organization, if you're watching the recorded like a lot of people do or listening to the podcast, um, share it out and do so we can get some more support for Free to Teach. Their mission, what we're gonna learn more about today, I think is one that's gonna touch a lot of folks and it really impacts our community so much, not only now, but for future generations, which are going to be the ones taking care of all of us when we get older and, and here and do. So we want to make sure we're taking care of our kids and our teachers right now. Yeah. Can you do uh, us in a little favor and give us a little background for the viewers as to what yeah. Free to Teach is, a little bit of how the organization got started in y'all's mission? Yeah, so free to teach um, in the simplest terms, we're a free supply store for teachers. So we operate a year round supply store um, where every item that teachers leave with is absolutely free um, to kind of do two things. We want to make sure that teachers aren't spending out of pocket and we want to make sure that we take that burden off of, um, you know, families who may not be able to afford the supplies. And then we really want to add in extra um you know, interesting, unique resources that maybe would have otherwise been thrown away or people might not know what to do with them. We take a ton of that um, and we get it out into the community. So the story goes, the lore of Free to Teach is that um, our wonderful, um, sweet, late mayor's uh, wife, Eula Battle, um, she and a group of friends got together in about 2010 and she had retired. She had been a teacher for over 30 years in the um, kindergarten teacher. Many in our community were probably in her classroom um, and she was an incredible educator. And, you know, as she retired, uh, you know, Mayor Battle started his work for the city. She um, had this box of binders and she was like, what, how do I get this back into a school? Am I going to call my old school? Like, how do I kind of repurpose this? So she and a group of friends um, founded Free to Teach in 2011 and they found a little spot for it in West Huntsville. And that first year, um, they gave away $38,000 in uh, resources to teachers. And then last year, fast forward, um, we gave away $1.74 million just last year alone. Wow. And so it's really incredible to see what someone's heart, like Eula and 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 that group of people who really believed in our in our educators, what that uh, what it took then to start that. And she always joked, if I had known what it took, I might not have been able to do yeah. it because it's a lot of work to get your five hundred one c three and to convince people to donate and all of the things. Um, but because of what they did, um, there is an incredible legacy even um, after her sad passing in twenty twenty. Um, she has left an incredible legacy um, for us to all carry forward. And so I was introduced to the organization when I first moved here. My husband is um, a pastor at Covenant Presbyterian here in Huntsville. I just had one child at that point. Now I have four. So I was I had a little more free time. And, um, you know, I, I met Miss Battle and I met her team and they were looking for a development director. And so when I started, I got to really dig into the organization um, learn all about what it looks like to do fundraising from the nonprofit side. I had been on boards before, but I'd never kind of worked for a nonprofit full time. And so I started as a development director and then I became the executive director in 2020. Um, and, you know, just to see the growth 
38,000 that first year. And now I think we're at about 13.7 million in supplies and resources that we've directly invested into the community through teachers. Yeah. And so for folks that are, that are watching uh, that may not know y'all, y'all are based here in Huntsville and y'all mm -hmm. support the three local school systems that we have in Madison County. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. So our focus is to get the supplies to the public school child um, through the teacher. And so you know, when they first started, it was core classroom teachers. Um, and because we've been able to grow um, the funding and some of the offerings that we have, we have opened up to pretty much anyone in the building, anyone in the school can come sure. and shop with us. So you're talking um, your school nurse, your librarian, your speech therapist, um, you know, the gamut, the core classroom teacher, the teacher's aide, the behavioral specialist, these are the people that we really want to support. And I think a key component that I really appreciate as a former teacher is just how important it is to support the teacher or child relationship and how incredible that relationship really is um, in the life of a child. That adult is with them for 11, you know, 10, 11 months in, in, out of a year. Um, and we really want to make sure that we're investing directly in the people that are in front of our kids. You know, I believe that the teacher is the leader of the classroom, the CEO of the classroom. And so we're an organization that really puts the teacher first. Um, we listen to what they need and we do our best every day to get it. Yeah. Well, I think that's so true. As like I said, uh, as, as a spouse of a teacher who's entering her 24th year this year, Yes. Um, you know, there is there is such a connection when a teacher can make that bond with a child yeah. and and and, you know, not having the resources that a child may need or the resources yeah. in the classroom to connect better or to, to provide better opportunities to class yes. does not provide the best environment for that connection to happen. And so mm -hmm. when that when that connection can happen, magic happens yeah. and, and, and there, there's a better learning environment for the child, better, more enjoyable learning environment makes it more uh, just a pleasure to go to work and do things. It makes it easier for the teacher yeah. when they have these resources and the students have these resources. Right. And yeah. uh, I, I just think it's, it's critical. And, and you and I were talking off air before we went live. And I think this is something I wanted, I told you I wanted to bring up was, you know, we're so blessed for those watching that, that are not here in, in North Alabama, um, yeah. you know, you read the U.S. News World Report and we're always touting and the cities and the counties proud about how we're always on the top three list of best places to live, whether it's Huntsville or Madison or, or the whole nine yards or the best place to, you know, for engineers to move to whatever list. We're, yeah. Huntsville's proud to be on one of these top lists and it is a great place to live. It's a great place to, to, to raise a family and all these things. Yeah. Uh, and we do have three great public school systems here in our county. Yeah. But I think what a lot of people lose sight of is that there's still a need in our community. And mm -hmm. I, I saw something on your website I wanted to highlight, which was mm -hmm. that uh, about 18% of students in Madison County live in below the poverty line. Mm -hmm. And then uh, over 42% of students in our local school system receive redu reduced or free lunch. Mm -hmm. So what that tells me, and I, I know this from, you know, hearing stories from my wife and, and, and things that, that, that are needed at her local school, that there is a need there. And it yeah. may not be, at the forefront of what everybody sees and in the, in the eyes and the news and do, but there's an underlying need there. Mm -hmm. and, and when that need is not met, it goes back to what we were just saying. It creates a disconnect in the classroom that mm -hmm. makes it tough for the teacher to teach and make that connection and for the student to learn. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's crucial. You know, I think we have three gr really great school systems. We have a ton mm -hmm. of organizations, teachers, administrators that are all trying to do their best. But I think what is unique about free to teach is that we have kind of recognized that there is that disconnect where, um, you know, there are families that can't get everything on the target list, right? On the school supply list. They can't go to Walmart and spend $56 when they're living paycheck to paycheck. And I think that's real. And um, that's real, not just in back to school season in August when we're all doing stuff the bus, which is so vital and so important but it's real all year long. Um, yeah. And we have kids that are moving here, unexpected um, additions to the roster. You know, there's just a lot going on. We have teachers who come and they've been switched. They they were a kindergarten teacher. Now they're going to be fifth grade come January. Right. There's just a lot of dynamics happening in the school every day. And so our focus is to be a very positive part of solving that puzzle because we know there's a, there's a lot going on in the school every day. Um, 
but yeah, I have teachers that come to me um, and they're able to get those Texas instrument calculators. Sometimes we get those in from donors. Right. And, um, you know, I love working with um, teachers like Miss Cunningham at Morris. And she's telling me, Allison, this calculator will be with my eighth grader all the way through high school and maybe beyond, depending on what he does. And just to know that that was brought to us by, you know, at our CPA firm, Honeycomb, right? They brought us 80 of those calculators that are now out directly yeah. impacting the kid through the relationship with the teacher. And so I think that one of the key moments for me was when one of our teachers, um, Heather, she shared with me that a student said to her, thank you for making it equal, right? When she was able to kind of get those supplies to the child. And she asked her student, like, what did you mean by that? And she just said, like, it's, it can be really embarrassing to not come in with the fresh thing and the fresh backpack and everything that I need. And the fact that you were able to get that to me, nobody else saw you give me that. And I know you got it for free, just made it feel so good to start the school year. Um, and that's, those are the relationships. Those are the stories that we're able to support all year yeah. long. You know, I don't think there's a lot of places, unless you have a child in our public schools, there's, it's, it's hard to know exactly how to make an impact. And free to teach is a great way to marshal together community resor resources to make an impact on classrooms um, because that, you know, that is real supply prices. They've gone up 24% in the last two years. It's very expensive. Um, and teachers have supply budgets for their classroom. And what we really encourage them to do is to spend that budget um, on your, your microscope, your curriculum, your ink. I don't got ink. Okay. I don't have time for ink. Sure. I can't afford it. You know, use that classroom budget really wisely. Um, on those bigger pieces, come to us for the consumables and then the really unique, interesting stuff that we're just getting in all the time that's going to help you just be a better teacher. We want to make sure that we're not only meeting the need, but that we're growing and, and growing an education future for Alabama, which we all know needs support in its public schools. So I think Absolutely. that's what I'm really proud of, uh, about yeah. our work as a team at Free to Teach. Yeah. Well, there's so many kind of touch back on a couple of those points there. You know, the first is that, that I think it's, it's so true that, that there are so many pressures on a child today and, and it's so tough with social media and the peer pressure and doing and keeping up with the Joneses. And so for a child to come to school and not have the resources that other children have, the bare minimum, much less all the bells and whistles that some of the other kids like my school yeah. son probably has compared to others that yeah. um, and do it, it 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 takes that pressure off of that child. They don't feel it. They don't feel yeah. embarrassed. They don't feel anxiety about it. Not to mention actually having the resource so they can do excel in the classroom. You know, so you, you take both those things together. So I think that's so great that y'all do that. And then certainly, you know, look as we talked before we went on air. There's also the economic pressure on the teacher. A lot of teachers. Yeah. Uh, don't don't make uh, you know what we think is is a fair wage for their importance in our community, and so for them to have to stretch their resources can put a burden or put them in a precarious position of, do I take resources I don't have at home to to take care of things that's important to me in the classroom? So you're providing those opportunities here and doing yes. because it's it's not only for supplies for students, but it's also for uh, enhanced instruction for the teachers so they can provide those resources. Yeah. It's so true. I have so many people like yourself that are the spouses or significant others of our teachers. I get sometimes more thank yous from them than yeah. from the teacher. Like, thank you. My family budget looks a lot better. There's been yeah. less Amazon deliveries this year. You know, it, it makes a difference because teachers really, they will do what it takes. I mean, they're going to do what it takes to go above and beyond for the kids in their classroom. So it's super exciting to say, come here, don't spend your own money, pocket that for your own family um, and come to free to teach. Well, I thought it was one thing you mentioned to me, too, was that was interesting. You kind of you touched on it a second ago. But one of the other great things about our community, we have a lot of great corporate uh, companies here, companies here that are doing business in, in the defense yeah. industry and other areas here. But they have resources that if they were tapped into, they may have excess or leftover things that could be used. And you guys are kind of taking uh, that to front and to task and say, look, let me reach out to a lot of these corporate partners in town and see if they have things that might be beneficial that nobody else may have even thought of or nobody had the time to do. Tell That's us a little it. bit about that. That's it. We had a company who had this warehouse and it was full. There were like six pallets of these very interesting, unique containers that had just sat there. And they were like, can you use this? I was like, I can use it. We can use it. So my team, we went out there, we picked those up. And now those containers that were just sitting in a warehouse, they were from a project that was finished. 
those are now in art and science classrooms across the community. Yeah. You know, I think about binders. I mean, binders. Who would have thought we're still using paper? Unbelievably, <laughs> their teachers are still using paper. And, uh, you know, our binders are all in-kind donations. We've given away thousands and thousands of binders. We're actually kind of low on binders right now. So bring them in. Um, and our teacher, you know, we had a school come take 800 binders. Their bunch of their teachers came, they shopped because they were organizing their entire curriculum for the year and they were able to get it from us. And I think my team's going to laugh at me because this will be wrong. But I think the last time I checked to get one of those one inch binders was like $9. That's a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, that's times, times 20, times 30. Um, I think of art equipment. I think of our mm -hmm. fabric that we get from interior designers who don't need it anymore. It's last season, but we'll take it. We'll take it and we'll get yeah. it out. There is just a ton of resources. We get over a million dollars in in-kind donations that we process and get back out. Uh, Walmart will drive over there and they've got lamps. We've got a, a volunteer and he just comes and fixes those things so that teachers can take them to their classroom. Yeah. I mean, we are we are saving the planet over here at Free to Teach. You know, we're getting a lot of resources repurposed and then sent out to classrooms. I think I think a key thing that I think about are rolling chairs. I mean, you're sitting in a rolling chair right now, right? It's nice. Those are very, it's going to be very expensive. I mean, we, I met with a principal the other day who started the year with that one, a principal, you know, the, and like I said, I want to be so clear that I think our schools are doing their best on so many levels, but if we can just help in this focused way of getting some of these resources out there, this is going to help them stay focused on what they need to do. So I'll, I'll find some rolling chairs, you know, I mean, I had, um, a company was downsizing, I think, during the pandemic. They gave us maybe 80 rolling chairs. We have 100 teachers shop on a Saturday. Guess how many rolling chairs we had at the end of that day? <laughs> we had none. I mean, those are hot items. So I can't promise all my teachers rolling chairs, but I, we do our best. You know, so it's just exciting to be a place where people can just take, you know, books. We gave away 38,000 books last year. You know, wow. it's just, it's neat to be able to repurpose them. And I need to highlight our volunteers. I mean, they're they're there every day, sorting and organizing and getting this out and our staff. So it's really it's a team effort. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I love that that, that you're you're, you're kind of looking through our community to find in kind donations because these are things that these companies are don't need anymore, and and they may just go to waste yeah. or, or or be re repurposed for something that may not be as good or, or recycled. Yes. And you're recycling in, in a beneficial way without actually you having are. to physically do it's it. bonus and, points um, if you deliver it to us. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> well, I would laugh, but your, your rolling chair made me laugh. We were talking about this at the house the other night. So last year, I remember I always go help Shannon set up her classroom. And last year we went and, and she, I, if you know me, you know, I'm the least handy person in America. I, I mechanically declined. And so she had like three rolling chairs for her small group tables and oh, stuff that she needed. And I put those together. I said, you sit in these things right now and roll because I don't want any of your babies in these chairs because <laughs> I want to make sure first that you've got them working. So I think I did it right. Nobody, none of the children did, but, but those are a need because a lot of the elementary teachers have small group tables where they yeah. work in smaller groups and they have these little chairs and do. And so that there's a need for all kinds of things that That's people right. would, would think it's just crayons and, and, and pencils, yeah. but it, there's a greater need out there for that. There is, there really is. There's so much that teachers can do. Yeah. Um, as we kind of walk through, can you kind of walk through for people, you know, people who have never experienced this or done this and teachers that may not have shot there that are watching the interview, walk through when, when you have a new teacher that maybe wants to come out and shop and do what that yeah. experience is like and how that works. Yeah, it can be overwhelming your first time for sure. So, I mean, basically, um, we do serve all 88 public schools in Madison County's three public school systems. That's our focus as an organization. And, um, you know, teachers really don't need a lot. They just need their um, school email and they need to go to our website to register. And then once you make an account with us, you'll see a calendar open up. Uh, we used to have teachers come every other month, but because we've been able to raise more um, funding to support the store, we've opened it up to every month because what I know about teachers and myself is it's hard to remember what you ate for lunch yesterday, let alone when you were at Free to Teach last. So we just say, come every month, come as, uh, as often as you can. Um, and, you know, when you come in, you need your badge, your ID, you check in or with your email, and you're going to have about 45 minutes to shop. And those are Tuesday or Thursday afternoons. And okay. the first Saturday of the month. 
Um, we have about 60 teachers on the evening shops and about 100 on your Saturday shop. Um, and we've been so full. Uh, we just we've served about 1,200 teachers in the past six weeks. We've been almost maxed out, I think, almost every shop. And so my team is so amazing. They've opened up additional Saturdays. We did nine additional Saturdays last year. Wow. Um, so that's 100 teachers on a Saturday. During the month of July, we had 100 teachers almost every other day. So we shuffle you through every 30 minutes. We do 10 teachers and it's really fun. Our volunteers are just like, what, what do you teach? What do you need? Tell us everything. We know we just oh, yeah. welcome them. It's a very positive place. Um, teachers are funded differently across the school. So while a classroom teacher might have some budget, um, maybe a teacher's aide might not, or a behavioral right. specialist might not have as much budget. So we right. really right. want to focus on getting as many, as much resources to those teachers as possible. So yeah, you just, you get a shopping cart, you're going around, you have a list, you make choices. Um, there's limits on, on some items, um, you know, but really we just want to make sure that you're getting a wide variety of things. There's, um, you know, technology, there's classroom decor, there's your binders, your books. Uh, so you're going to have a really fun shop. You go to the back, that's another 15 minutes. And then you check out and you get a receipt. We have this really great system um, with a software developer who donated a lot of his time to build us kind of our back door. And yeah. you check out and you get a receipt and you can see I saved $800 today at Free to Teach. So wow. we are immediately able to tell you about the difference that your community is making for you. And that, and that would feel good. You know, when I was a teacher, there was one similar program. I think it was called Project Cicero in New York City Public Schools. And I took like a suitcase and filled up a suitcase of books. And that was my classroom library for four years, you know, um, to be able to do it at this level for so many teachers is super exciting, you know. So I think what's also been interesting is we've had a lot of new first time teachers, but we've started to really get more veteran teachers who are mm -hmm. like, I didn't really think I needed this. But now that I come in, you know, it's just so many, so many ideas. Like I talked to the career teacher at Lee yeah. and Huntsville High. And he's like, I have I have lesson plans to teach, teach kids about career readiness, but I don't necessarily know how to get all these concepts across. So I schedule my appointment at Free to Teach every month and just look at what you guys have. And I get so many ideas for my uh, lesson. Yeah. It's really cool. And then two other things I did want to highlight. We were really trying to layer in kind of lesson kits, STEM kits that focus on, you know, K through eight science standards. We're doing some more high school pieces. Um, so layering in some more high quality kind of take take and teach basically this is okay. enough for 26 kids in a class enjoy the lesson it's going to last you a week let us know how it went so just getting more of those specialized resources to teachers and then last year through conversations with nurses and teachers um, we developed a feminine hygiene program so we're yeah. getting you know there's 17,000 middle and high school girls in our schools and the research shows that about one in four struggle to afford period products and so now the teachers can take these very discreet packs. Again, they helped us design them. We work with the health leaders in the schools because often what will happen is a girl will have to go to the nurse's station and get the, get what they need. And that can be, again, embarrassing. It can be, right. we might just stay home from school that day, you know? So just if they know, they can just grab it from a discreet basket in the corner of the classroom, get what they need. It's just another piece of the puzzle about listening to teachers, getting the supplies to the teacher, Right. so that they can get it to the child in a way that makes sense. I think that's fantastic. Um, and, and I love that you are, you know, you start with the core, the basics mm -hmm. of what the core class is, and then now you're starting to, to inch out to what the other needs are for the students and the teachers. And I love that you're doing this in the community. You're listening to the teachers. And, yeah. and I'll share with people, you know, and I think a lot of people realize this, but, but you may overlook it is, is that when teachers make that connection, as we talked about earlier, yeah. that, that these students, especially younger students, but even the older students too, they'll, they'll share things with their teacher and do. Right. And so you're, when you guys tap into those teacher resources over mm -hmm. the course of a year or two, and you're hearing feedback, you're mm -hmm. learning what, what there may be some needs that may not be being filled. And so these, these feminine products and the resources yeah. for that and the STEM kits are things that is pretty evident to me that you're listening to yeah. boots on the ground to, yeah. to kind of figure out what's needed because, you know, I can tell you, you know, kids are, kids will open up if a teacher makes a connection with them and they can share that with you. And usually if it's one or two kids that are saying this in each classroom, you're going to yeah. find out that it's a greater need than you might've first realized. 
Absolutely. And, you know, the teachers are so brilliant. It's like they spend their time thinking about how to take these very abstract concepts, math, multiplication, and make it concrete for learners on a wide variety of levels, mm -hmm. reading at a wide variety of levels. So teachers aren't just teaching one lesson to 30 kids, okay? They're di I mean, you know this, I'm preaching to the choir. They're differentiating all day long. How am I gonna teach my M readers and my Z readers? And how am I gonna scaffold up for Tommy and scaffold down for Janie or whatever it is? Yeah. I mean, and, and, and manage behavior, you know, and try to eat lunch. It's just unbelievable. I think they're, yeah. I think they're just the most brilliant people in the world. And so just to be able to listen to them and be a place where they are at the center of um, community support is really special. I mean, it really, it's an honor. Um, and, I, and I, it's, it gets, it's what I wake up every day. And I think for me personally, as a mom of four and a former teacher, I believe that my child, George, I'll use George and um, Susie, who lives maybe in a different zip code. I believe they should have the same opportunities, mm -hmm. same experiences. Um, it, you know, I mean, I, I think they both should be able to do whatever it is that they want to do in life. And so I think that it's very special for me to go to my child's school and see a poster on the hallway wall and know where it came from. It came from free to teach. I mean, that that's pretty special, you know? And so I think equity and equality in education is um, probably front of mind for me because I, I think every kid just deserves an excellent education. And I think um, this is kind of our focus as an organization. Um, and I was having a conversation with a company today. I was like, you know, we're pretty simple. It's very what you see is what you get. But I really do. I believe these pencils and these crayons are transformational um, because of the model. It's really carried us forward. And, and that's the legacy Eula gave us when she founded it. You know, it's it's incredible. Yeah. Well, teacher, it takes a, 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 a special, special, special person uh, <laughs> to be a, a teacher and, and um, teachers, you know, there's a reason people connect with teachers and that they come yeah. back. And I remember a couple of years ago, um, one of the, uh, they do the senior stroll, you know, in Madison and a lot of schools yeah. do that. And so they come back to the elementary schools and do, and I remember one of them leaving a note for my wife uh, and had been in my wife's, I think sixth grade class when she was teaching sixth grade at that time um, about still that she was going to go to college to be a teacher because of my wife. And it's like, you know, six years later and, and all this kind of stuff and do, and it was just so powerful. It's amazing. But that's just one example of the many thousands and thousands of great teachers we have in that's, our community. And that's exactly it. And I think what we've pivoted with free to teach too, is we're telling the story really well, like on our social media, if you want to kind of see what's happening in a classroom, just go pop over to Instagram. Like we are bringing to light. I mean, right now well not right now they've they're all out of school right now tomorrow morning there's going to just be amazing things happening across you know thousands for fifty five thousand kids tomorrow i mean and to be able to highlight this is what miss morris does um this is what mr smith does this is how they took our you know our keyboard and taught kids how a keyboard is made you know it's just it's just neat to kind of lift those stories um and tell about the impact teachers make um you know, it's special. It's special to tell those stories. And that's something I think our organization does well. Well, that's awesome. Well, as we wrap up, I want to be mindful of your time. Tell folks how they how they can help. You know, what, what can we do to support your organization? Uh, I saw several things on the website. Just give you a quick last minute or two to kind of tell folks how we can help you. I love it. OK, there's three things. So the first thing would be um, to just follow us on social and keep an eye on um, what's happening. OK, the second thing can be give back. Yeah social. Um, give back your time, um, your resources, or your uh, in-kind resources. Your, your Go clean out that garage and then head over to me at Lehman Ferry yeah. Road. So we take gently used books, um, gently used items all day long at our yeah. store at Lehman Ferry, 3054 Lehman Ferry, and you'll probably share that website. Um, so go ahead and bring those by. Um, as far as resources, we're really encouraging people to give monthly, um, you, you know, do your Netflix and do your free to teach. OK, even five dollars a month makes a difference because when people give back, we can simply give more. So we're able to buy in bulk. We're able to purchase in um, large quantities. I'm trying to fund our feminine hygiene program right now. Um, we really work to stretch that funding um, to meet 
you know, to meet the needs of our teachers. Um, you know, one thing that's been so interesting is just the word of mouth through companies. I've had a few grants over the past year of just employees who are like, wait a minute, my spouse is a teacher and our company has a grant process. So just connect mm -hmm. us. If there's a, you know, a grant or a funding piece that's helpful. Um, and, you know, volunteering is so fun. Like if you are, I mean, if you just want to come sort pencils for an hour and that sounds fun to you, <laughs> Come on down, you know, so you can make a volunteer profile on our website. Tuesday, sure. Thursday evenings are really fun. You're checking out teachers. It's like playing store. You have a scanner. We're, you know, we're, we're talking to teachers. We're asking them what they're, what are you going to do with this? Um, so Tuesday, Thursday afternoons are just a great time to come shop, uh, to come help teachers shop. Um, that's a really special time. And then throughout the week, you can pop in for an hour. Um, this is great for if you have a student and you're trying to get um, service hours, we're a great spot for that. Um, okay. So, yeah, go to our website um, and just get connected. It's a really fun way to impact public ed in our community. Well, thank you for what you and, and your organization and all the volunteers are doing. As I said, this is something that I think is, is making a tremendous impact in our community. And I know the need is there. And I know as our community grows and our schools grow, mm -hmm. and we have new schools, the need is only growing. Yeah, and so, is. folks, I encourage you to, to follow uh, free to teach on social and check out their website and volunteer and donate and get out there and get involved. Cause this is something that is, is going to not only benefit uh, the people, the teachers and students directly, but it's going to indirectly to benefit and make our community a better place too. So yeah. also thank you for your time today and thank you for what you're doing. I greatly appreciate it. Well, thank you to you too. It's incredible what you're doing to platform so many and highlight so many great organizations. So I appreciate your time too, Morris. Right. Thanks everybody. Take care. Bye.